Hey everyone, American Pizza Books here. I am back at you guys with another book review, and I'm going to be reviewing Haunted uh, Perrin Manor by Lee Mountford. Now, this is the first book by Lee Mountford that I've read. I've seen a lot of his work on Amazon, which is where I discovered him, actually, and he's got, like, a wide, wide range of books that he's written. He's got a number of series that he's written, and I'll definitely be checking out more of his work. I think I do have another book of his uh, in a different series. It's actually a trilogy. Haven't gotten into it yet, but I'm sure when I get around to reading that one, I'll review that one, too. As, of, as I'm reviewing this, I have actually read the sequel to this book, which actually serves as a prequel. Uh, before the events of this book, and it gives you the backstory, or kind of the backstory, on Perrin Manor, the actual, like, house and the title of this one. And it gives you kind of, like, the rundown of what happened in the house, uh, which is discussed in this book. So, it starts out with, uh, there's two sisters, Sarah and Chloe, and Chloe with her husband and their daughter, who I believe is, like, uh, is like six months old, a year old. And they've inherited this house from their uncle, and it's like this big mansion and whatnot. And it comes, like, just in time, because Chloe and Andrew are kind of having, if I remember correctly, they're having, like, financial struggles. And then Sarah has been, has come out of the military, and doesn't really have, like, a, a, a clear, like, plan or future or anything. So she, they offer her to come and live with them, and she kind of takes them up on that offer. And they live in, the, and they all move into this mansion. And at first, everything's kind of okay, but then they kind of start to notice some weird things going on. And here and there, there's like a baby monitor, and there's sounds and whatnot, and so on and so forth. And that's kind of the plot. But as you go along, of course, you find out more about the manor. They start to investigate a little bit. Some weird, like I said, some weird stuff starts to happen, and so on and so forth. Kind of, the, kind of the typical haunted house stuff, um, up until the very end, at least. Now, as far as what I thought about this book, I would describe it, for the most part, as being kind of basic. Not bad, by any, me by any means, but kind of basic, because, like I said, they, you know, family moves into the house, it's got a crazy backstory, very violent backstory, and, of course, things start to happen. Some things very stereotypical because they got a baby. And so, of course, they got the baby monitor. And they start seeing things and hearing things on the baby monitor and so on and so forth. And as I was reading this, it just, you know, it, again, it felt very basic. Like, yeah, okay, been here, done this, you know, seen this, read this before, and so on and so forth. It's not a bad formula. It's an entertaining formula. And, again, I didn't think it was bad by any means. But in terms of, like, the pacing and the things that happen and so on and so forth, it just felt very, 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 like, cliched and whatnot. The characters, while not, like, one-dimensional or cardboard cutouts by any means necessary, I didn't feel super connected to them. I felt that the dynamic between the characters, like, the family dynamic and the relationships, felt a little bit forced. I didn't really get the sense that you know, it was more, I don't want to say it was more telling and not showing, but kind of, um, the characters, like the individual characters themselves didn't feel one dimensional. Like in terms, like I said, the family dynamics felt a little forced, the characters themselves, um, not one dimensional, but not the deepest characters ever. I felt like the character with the most depth and development was probably Sarah because she has this event that happened in the military with one of her friends and it kind of affects her and how she acts and how she feels about herself. And I think the house kind of takes advantage of that and her vulnerable state of mind because of that, which is kind of interesting. Chloe was... I didn't really get a ton of depth from her um you know she felt kind of like the stereotypical sort of parent that kind of did the, for these types of stories and whatnot kind of the same thing with andrew sarah though a little more depth a little more nuance with her and kind of some more interesting things happening with her there's a paranormal investigator who like wrote a book on the house 
We see him a few times in the book. He seems like a really interesting character, and I think that we're going to get like a lot more of him later on in the books, and it's kind of hinted that he's going to be a more main character in the books going forward, which, I, which I'm really excited about. But, I don't know, the characters, again, not cardboard cutouts by any means, not bad characters, but just not that deep either. Though I'm sure that will probably change as the series goes on, because I do believe there are like six books in this series. Uh, like I said, the pacing is, it's its good for the most part. Like, there's no, like, really, really slow points in this book, for, really. Like, but again, it just felt kind of, like, par for the course with, with, with these types of haunted house books. Um, the writing is fine. It does its job for this genre and whatnot. Again, like I've said before in these videos, I'm not super, 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 like, you know, I'm not an aficionado. I'm not, like, a literary aficionado when it comes to stuff like that. I'm not, like, one of your, you know, university English professors. You know, I'm not going to criticize it for not being, you know, uh, Heming, you know uh, Hemingway or, or, you know, Dickens or anything like that. As long as the writing transports you into the story and serves as a good window medium into the story then it's fine by me, and I think it's doing its job, and I felt that that was the case here. So the writing is good. I mean, a little bit basic at times, but, I mean, for the most part, it's, it's fine. And I felt that way up until the ending, and I guess, I guess, spoiler alert, but towards the end, they all start to realize, because there's been a lot of, like, infighting amongst the family, like, especially between Chloe and Sarah, because they kind of disagree on what's going on within the house, because Chloe kind of wants to ignore it and not acknowledge it and denies it. And Sarah does too for a bit, up until a certain point, and then finally towards the very end, they, they're they all on the same page, and they they like, we have to get the hell out of here. Because an incident happens where, I believe it's Chloe gets trapped in the room with her daughter, and they see, like, the figure, like, the man that, that I believe it was, I think either Sarah or Chloe had seen, like, once or twice. And they see him in the room with the baby and with Chloe, like, because they, like, have to bust down the door and they see the actual figure. So it's, like, proof to them, like, okay, th what's going on here is real. And so they have to get out. And they have to get out kind of prematurely because they plan to leave. But then, of course, more shit goes down. So they have to, like, you know, split, like, right then and there. And they get trapped in the house. So like every inch, every exit they try to go through and whatnot, they they try to go through the front doors. There's a specter blocking it. They try to go through the back doors. There's a specter blocking it. So then they finally have to go down into the basement where a lot of kind of screwed up shit has gone down. And of course they get trapped down there. So they're literally surrounded by entities that are not letting them leave the house, which was freaky. Which was I was on the I was on the edge of my seat when I was reading that with reading that part. So that was very well done. That was very good. I will say the spirits in this book are described very, very well and with very good detail. The spirits legitimately creep me out with the descriptions and whatnot. Same thing with the with the sequel. Lee Mountford really does a good job in making these spirits really, really creepy and just otherworldly. And it's 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 really it does a really good job with that aspect. And especially in the next book. But I really like that sequence. And then when they finally get out, something happens at the very end. And the very end hooks you. And it's like, okay, now, well, now I got to continue. Because now I got to see how this, how this goes on, how this ends and whatnot. So Mountford does a good job with hooking you at the very end. Um, at the beginning, it starts out kind of, you know... It's not a bad beginning, but it's an okay beginning, and it is what it is, but the very end definitely hooks you. I will say, like I said, I have read the second book as I'm reviewing this one, and I can tell you right now, the second book is actually very, very good. It is, to me, it's like, it's way above this one. Now, like I said, this is a series, so it kind of makes sense because this book is kind of laying the ground for what's going to happen in future books, more or less. So it kind of makes sense. It's sort of an entry book, more or less. Um, but even still, I felt it was kind of... It was decent, you know, not great, not... It was decent. It's just... It is what it is, you know. It's entertaining. 
So I would say read this one. Maybe start with the second book because like I said, Haunted Devil's Door, which is the second one, it serves as like a prequel to this one. So I'd say maybe read that one first, then read this one because even though this is the first book, if you read the second one, the, the things in this one will probably make more sense. I kind of wish I had read the second book like in retrospect before reading this one. And you also find something out about Sarah in the second book that's completely fucked. Um, but yeah, no, so I would recommend this series if you like kind of the supernatural haunted house type of thing. I think you would enjoy this. If you don't mind kind of the stereotypical formula and some of the cliches with the haunted house genre, then you, you, won't, you won't mind the ones and then this one either. And I'll definitely be continuing with the series. I've read the first two books. Uh, the next one is Haunted Purgatory, I believe, which picks up after this one. So again, I know I've said it several times, but just to be clear, uh, Haunted Paramount is the first book. The second book is the prequel to this one. And then the third book actually continues the events after this one. So, but I'd recommend it. Let me know what you guys think. What did you think of Haunted Parent Manor? What do you think of the series? Uh, have you read anything else by Lee Mountford? I know he's got a very, very wide catalog of works and whatnot. He's written a bunch of different stuff, so definitely let me know if you've read any more of his works. And that's pretty much it for this one. And I'll be back later, so peace and keep on reading.